Good morning everyone welcome back to my channel. My goodness me is it a chilly one. This morning I might end up having to add a cardigan over the top of my roll net because it feels so chilly and grey and autumnal and of course I am loving it. I feel like I'm really getting into the cosy vibes now. Um, I'm up a bit later than I normally am because I'm not gonna lie to you. I may have binged something last night and you know I'm not really much of a binger but I really really enjoyed this series and I actually started watching it um on the train going into London the other day um and I just had to finish it because I only managed to watch like an episode and a half like two episodes and I just knew I had to finish it and that is the Beckham documentary on Netflix now I I feel like I'm ever so slightly too young to have really been like a big Spice Girls fan. Um, it's quite funny actually, I did study the Spice Girls as part of my degree. I always get questions from people like, whenever I tell people things that I study in my degree, it's so funny because I will say like the most random thing, like someone will mention, um, I don't know, the Impressionist, and I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I study the Impressionist. People will mention um, the, oh, what's the era? It's not industrial era. It was like John Wright. What is the era called? Anyway, I studied the most random things as part of my degree. I did a degree in liberal arts um, and I absolutely loved it. And basically, to kind of summarise what my degree was, was basically looking at society and culture um, throughout different like generations. So we started with, oh, it's got a really annoying that I cannot remember the time frame. It's the one where they were kind of like discovering things. They started discovering like stars in the universe. I want to say the Impressionists, but it's not. I want to say the Observers, but it's not. So it got such a specific name. And whenever I say it to people, most people don't know that era. It's kind of like the 1400s. I just remember John Wright was such a big person in that era anyway. <laughs> Basically, my degree was like studying different kind of like generations and different time frames and like how society and culture really affected that. So I looked a lot into like pop culture um, and especially in kind of like more modern times. One of my favorite semesters that we had was the semesters that we studied McDonaldization which yes, is an actual word. Um, so like the McDonaldization of Starbucks, the McDonaldization of Pret-a-Manger, and it's basically like companies that just kind of like take over the world and they do so in a way that it's like, they have their own kind of like brand, but they tailor it ever so slightly. So like if ever you go to a McDonald's in a different country, you know you're gonna get the basic like hamburgers and like chicken nuggets that you always like, but they will always have things that are like slightly tailored. Um, to that like particular country and what's like popular for them. Um, like Starbucks does the same. They actually have different roasts, which I find really interesting, like different blends of their coffee. Like in America, it's actually a lot sweeter because they really like a sweet coffee. Whereas places in like Italy and France, they hate a sweet coffee. So they actually make their roast from a different blend, which I find so interesting. And this has been the most weird tangent I've ever gone on discussing my degree that I did however many moons ago. Actually, my dissertation was literally on influence culture, which I found really, really interesting. And I based it off the stat that one in eight children want to become YouTubers now. Don't know what the stat is now, but that is what it was like back in the day. Um, and just debating whether that's like okay or not. Because I always say to people, it's very interesting because I feel like when children say what they want to be when they're older, most of the time it's not doctor or lawyer. Like, and especially because they don't really understand what goes into becoming a doctor. And I see people wanting to be influencers, like especially children wanting to be influencers, the same way that I see children wanting to be a pop star, or wanting to be a movie star, or wanting to be a footballer. Um, like it's just one of those things where it's like something they love doing. Um, like when we were going to the Isle of Wight actually, when I went to Cow's Festival, there was a little girl who literally had a little um, like selfie stick and was vlogging. Like she was literally there going, hi guys, so me and my dad are going to the Isle of Wight today. And when she saw me going out my camera, her little face, she just looked over and just went, as if to be like, there's someone actually doing it. Like an adult is actually doing it. It was the cutest thing in the world. Um, so I love it. I think it's so, so sweet that children want to do that. And like, I assume that her content is not going anywhere. I assume that she's literally just filming it and like it stays on her um, little phone that she had. Um, but anyway, one of the things I did study at university, which is always so interesting, is actually the Spice Girls. I studied how they were basically the first wave of feminism in the early 2000s and what feminism meant back then versus what it meant now. And we really looked into like the girl power movement. So I feel like I know the Spice Girls as a whole quite well. This honestly has been the biggest tangent. I'm trying to talk about the David Beckham documentary. What I was trying to say is I feel like I know the Spice Girls as a whole really, really well and the movements that they made and the music that they did. Like I literally studied song lyrics and things like that. But I never really knew David Beckham and Victoria Beckham as a couple. Like 
One of the main things that everyone keeps talking about with this documentary is how funny Victoria Beckham is. She is flipping hilarious. Like, I feel like she's one of those people that's just so easy to get on with, like, can really take the mick out of herself. She's just got very, like, British sense of humour. Um, and David Beckham is just such a sweetheart, like, an absolute sweetheart. And the things they had to go through back in the day, like, honestly, the media was just awful. And I don't know if it's worse now or worse back then, because obviously back then there was no talk of, like, mental health and um, there was no kind of, like thought about like is David okay going through this whereas nowadays despite that the fact that there is that talk you've obviously got cancel culture which is like a much bigger issue that we've got now um and you can't really escape it like I didn't really know about the kick that he did where basically he tripped someone over got a red card and like ruined the um the uh any chances of Britain getting into the final. I'm not really a football fan. We're not a football household. Despite the fact that my brother and my dad are big football fans, we are not a football household. Alex has never been into football. And I do remember actually, it was when, um, was it the year 2018 when we like, England got really far through. I think they got into like the semi-finals of the football. And it was so funny because everyone obviously assumes that every man they ever meet is watching the football. And every single time we'd go out, they'd turn to Alex like, so what did you think of the game last night? And he just got to the point where he couldn't be bothered to explain that he doesn't watch it. So he'd just be like, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it was really, really exciting, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, we're not a football household. I don't really know a lot about football. A lot of my knowledge actually comes from Ted Lasso, which is another great one that I would recommend watching. Um, so... All I know is that he got sent off and basically from the sounds of it, his manager actually kind of like stabbed him in the back and managers should never really blame players. They should never put something on a player, but the manager of the England team at the time did. And it meant the world hated Beckham. So he escaped to America basically to go and see Victoria because um, she was on tour and he managed to escape it a little bit. So it's interesting because it's like he could get away from it. Whereas these days, there's no getting away from it. Like obviously, if, even if you go to America, you've still got your phone, you've still got Twitter, you've still got Instagram. So it was just really interesting looking at kind of how things have and haven't changed. And it's just insane what they had to go through. Because as I said, I feel like I'm a little bit too young to have remembered most of what they went through. I kind of just remember um, Victoria from being a Spice Girl. I do remember the very infamous um, where she got weighed by Chris Evans after having a baby, which makes my blood boil thinking about um but just what they went through and like how much they had to overcome it's just absolutely insane and i love them as a couple um i actually have a really funny story about david beckham that i don't think i've ever told on this channel but i actually met david beckham um so basically when i would do a lot of like photo shoots out in london um and i would do like shoots around like notting hill and holland park um Someone came over to me one time. I was literally just on the street. It was a house with some olive trees in the background. So I was like, cute, love it. Let's just take some photos here. And someone came out of the house and was like, I'm really sorry, but do you mind not taking photos here? Um, and if you are on public property, there is no one that's allowed to tell you not to take a photo. So I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I'm just on the pavement. Like, am I in your way? Happy to move out your way. He was like, no, no, no. Can you like, can you not take photos here? And I was just a bit like confused. So I was kind of just saying to him, I was like, oh, okay. Um, can I ask why? Like, I'm on the pavement, I'm on public property. And he just started being really weird, like this guy. And he didn't even come out from inside the house. I remember he came out from, like, the house next door. So I remember turning to him and I was like, sorry, is this your house? And he went, no, it's not my house. And that's when I was like, well, this is weird. Because he was like, look, it's my house. I really don't want it in the background of photos. So I would have been like, fair enough. But I was like, is this your house? He was like, no. I was like, what is going on? Anyway, someone starts, like, banging from the second floor window on, like, on the um like banging through the window like knocking and i like turned to look up and i was like oh is, is that the owner of the house and the, the, the guy was like yeah yeah he's asking if you can move on and i was kind of like oh okay all right started getting my stuff together then out of the front door walks david beckham and i was literally just like sorry sorry what and he came over and he was the nicest guy. He just came over and went, I'm so, so sorry to bother you. Um, obviously, I know you're on public property and I know it's just we've had loads of issues with the paparazzi recently. And it's David flipping Beckham. So obviously, I'm not going to argue with him. And I was getting my stuff to like go anyway. And I was literally just like, no, that's fine. No, no, no. I can move on that's fine don't worry about it don't worry about it he's like thank you so much like, i really appreciate your understanding like it's really really kind of you um and obviously i had no idea that it was his house no flipping clue i just liked his olive trees like that was literally the only reason why i was taking photos there and i just like turned to my friend who was shooting with at the time just went and it was just one of those moments where you're like, oh my God. And I remember telling my family that story because it was during summer and I told my dad that story and he sent me a photo and said, was this what he was wearing? Because he was at Wimbledon that day. And I literally looked at the photo and went, yep, yeah, 
yeah, it was. It was like this really nice like blue shirt. He had like a navy blue suit, like a cute little blue tie. And I was like, yes, that is exactly what he was wearing. And I can confirm he is just as beautiful in real life as he looks on camera and on TV. And he's just as nice. So like I was literally being a nuisance, like taking photos outside his house. He probably thought I was like a pretend paparazzi or something or whatever. Like he was going to Wimbledon that day. So he was new, he was gonna get papped and like he was trying to, I don't know, save the privacy of the house or whatever. I was the one being a nuisance and he was so lovely and it's just one of those memories that i just laugh about so so much and it's one of my favorite um like party stories to tell people you know when you have stories about like celebrities that you may have known or like celebrity encounters that is always the one that like trumps anyone else it's like wow you got shooed off by david beckham you got told to go away <laughs> outside of his house so it just makes me laugh so much and i can see in the interviews that victoria does when she's got the olive trees behind her i'm like mm, i know where that is I got kicked out from shooting in front of that. <laughs> it is so, so funny. Um, so yeah, stayed up late last night because I wanted to watch the David Beckham documentary. And I can confirm, even as a non-football fan, it's a very interesting one to watch because it's more about like the culture around football. And they explain things really well. And Victoria Beckham, we need another documentary that's like about her because she's hilarious she's so funny and she has been through so much as well and i feel like she was just her own entity in herself um and i absolutely love her for that so the biggest tangent ever i'm so sorry i've been talking for 11 minutes about god knows what but clearly i'm in a very very chatty mood today <laughs> perfume of the day you may not have seen this actually if you didn't watch to the end of my london vlog i would always recommend watching to the end of my vlogs because i feel like sometimes they get better towards the end um and i never want you guys to miss anything um so i unboxed this in my london vlog when i went up to london for the joe malone christmas workshop i don't know why the focus is now not focusing i'm so sorry um but this is the ginger biscuit there, there, there we go this is the gin no no it doesn't like it as soon as i get close this is the ginger biscuit perfume which is the new limited edition fragrance from joe malone for christmas and i have not stopped wearing this since getting it and i'm not gonna lie i was really skeptical like really really skeptical i was thinking how is ginger going to smell nice in a perfume how is that not going to smell like a home fragrance how are you not going to smell like a sweet shop but oh my goodness me it is beautiful it's got so many like warm tones but it also has a bit of an underlying like musky to it and i am so in love with it the way i described it when i unboxed this is i want to eat this but in like such a mature sophisticated way it is absolutely beautiful so i've been wearing this non-stop since getting it and i'm absolutely in love the packaging is beautiful as well it really stands out on my um counter i just think it's so so lovely and after christmas i'll probably just take the bow off um which you can easily remove just so that it's a little bit more subtle so i have just had a rather exciting delivery that i just couldn't wait to unbox with you guys because i have seen this brand all over tiktok and i've been obsessed with it ever since i first saw it because i feel like this is really going to change the game for me now you guys have seen how much my style has like evolved over the last few years and i feel like particularly in the last year with regards to my handbags i don't know if it's more of a maturity thing if it's just like an old woman thing and just kind of being a bit more sensible with my purchases but i have really increased the number of big handbags in my wardrobe i definitely used to be a small girl bag I still am I would say small handbags are my favorites but especially in terms of like practicality wise if I'm going to be out the house all day if I'm commuting to and from London if I've got like events or I want to take my laptop big handbags are quite essential and I have been loving my big handbags in my collection but the one difficulty with big handbags is storage and is the organization of it all so I'm really excited to unbox this because in here we have some handbag organizers you can probably see just there some of my favorite big handbags i think i've got a note from the brand these they very very kindly got in touch and offered to send them over and asked which ones i would like oh my goodness this is such a long note this is so sweet oh my goodness i didn't realize this but actually every single bag liner is expertly designed for the bag in question and they are lovingly handmade in house in the uk by our talented team they've all got a base shaper to them to fully support the bottom of the bag oh my goodness jess thank you so so much i'm really really excited about these and i have specifically chosen which bags i want for each of my handbags because i do feel like these are three handbags that are really really like needing liners um so the first one that I went for, oh my goodness me, 
is for my mulberry handbag now my mulberry base water we will definitely put all the liners in the handbag so that you can see what they look like my mulberry base water is one that i absolutely adore and it's a great like work bag office bag if it's my laptop and everything else that i need but it is one that gets really really messy and disorganized really quickly um so you can see how this is literally designed to be like the exact shape of the base water which is absolutely amazing now i chose this one in the gorgeous like mulberry color it's like a wine red and it is so so beautiful i also can't get over how soft this belt is it's just absolutely gorgeous oh my goodness i've just realized every single one has the same color tissue paper inside that is so so sweet um but as you can see there is loads of room inside so it's going to just hold your bag up really really nicely and i do feel like when it comes to leather handbags it's quite important to like support them and make sure that you're not going to like ruin the leather that it's not going to dishape or anything like that and i really like that there's little pouches as well they're just super easy access but they're really handy for things like lip balms lip glosses like keys stuff like that um and then we've just got the little handbag angels did i even say what brand it was before these are all from Handbag Angels, which as I said, I discovered on TikTok and I've seen their videos popping up so, so much because they literally do bespoke handbag liners, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and they're really affordable as well. I can really feel how like sturdy the bottom is. Like it's barely bending at all, which is absolutely amazing. Oh, it's removable though. <gasps> That's really clever. I'm guessing you can buy these separately then because you can completely take that out. So if you did want to be able to have a little bit more movement, you can, um, but if you want a base shaper, it just means that you are not going to ruin the shape of your handbag in any way, shape or form. So I feel like this color is definitely my favorite color, but that is for my Mulberry Bayes Water in the extra large, it's extra large size I have, the big size. I then picked up one that I feel like is quite an essential and i've definitely seen a lot of people talking about this on tiktok now this one is for my longchamp bag i feel like a longchamp pliage is almost like a rite of passage like for girls to have it, it's such a classic handbag to have in your collection really affordable as a designer handbags go as well and it's such a perfect work bag um so my Le pliage is in a navy blue color and i thought this forest green would look so so cool with it so i got this in the forest green color and look even the tag matches this is so lovely i don't think i've ever received something so like personalized and just really really thought through this is absolutely amazing handbag angels you have just done such an amazing job like look the red tag for the red one green tag for the green one that is so so cute and the green wrapping paper in as well um now if you're looking for like christmas presents or anything i know it's a little bit early to start thinking about it but after my trip into London the other day, it really has got me like starting to plan Christmas presents and think about what I want to be buying people. Because especially things like Black Friday, you'll be able to like pin things and start thinking about what you want to shop in the sales. So now is a perfect time to start making plans. Um, and I really, really love that you can shop these. I feel like it's such a lovely present to get someone, especially someone that kind of has it all. Like it's something that you wouldn't really think to buy yourself often. So I feel like this would make such a great present for that person that was just like buys themselves whatever they want. They're really, really difficult to shop for. I feel like this is so lovely and you can personalize what color you want to get them, what style and things like that. And like for their specific handbag needs. Um, so again, it's got the little inside pockets, which I really, really like, but I love the fact that they've just kept like a really big open base. I've seen some handbag inserts in the past and one thing that really put me off them is that they have like so many little compartments and like that kind of defeats the point of getting like a big handbag. I want to have a lot of space for laptops, for books, for water bottles, but I just want it to be able to like hold the shape better um, and organize things a little bit better. So again, it's got a base at the bottom. So it means it's not going to bend or misshape or ruin. And I feel like this is just going to really, really help with the shape of my La Pliage and just make sure that it stays looking beautiful. Now, if you're not a big handbag girly, then fear not because they also do ones for little handbags. And when I saw they did one for this particular bag, I audibly gasped because I was like, that is exactly what I have been missing. So as you can see, I got it in this little brown color, which actually might be my favorite. I can't decide which is my favorite, the like mulberry red or the brown. They are just so beautiful and so classic. And I deliberately got ones that I felt like would go really well with the bag in question. And um, because I want it to be like the kind of thing where you open it up and you're like happy to see the inside of it. So I love the fact that they do the personalized colors. They do the personalized bags. Um, so this one is actually for my mini Alexa. Now my mini Alexa, I think is probably safe to say is my favorite handbag to date. I use her almost daily. I love her to pieces. She's so, so great, but she is a much softer leather than most of the other handbags in my collection um so i do find that she's one that can like really easily misshapen she's one that i've already noticed has started misshapening 
and she's also one that can really like sag especially at the bottom if i've got a lot in it so i'm really really excited about the prospect of this because i feel like it's just going to help so so much with the shape of the handbag it's also going to help with the organization and i love the color of it i feel like it's just going to go so perfectly with my tan mulberry bag because you've got the beautiful like chocolate brown color so i'm so excited to get these in my handbags see how much they're going to like make a difference with regards to the shape of them and get organizing so thank you so much handbag angels these are honestly so so kind of you and i feel like without being dramatic they're going to change my life I know that sounds so dramatic, but I really do feel like they're going to change my life. Okay, first up, I just wanted to say I've got these muddled round. I ordered the Oxblood for the La Pliage, and I ordered the green for the Bayswater. And oh my goodness me, the difference it has made. Just look at it sitting inside of that. I really like the green as well. I feel like the green works really, really well next to the um, tan. I feel like it really gives it a pop. And it's so difficult to see on camera just how much of a difference this has made because this is quite a heavy handbag. Um, you can see that I like use it a lot and I do find, especially because of the hardware and because of this flap on top, it's quite heavy on the rest of the bag. So I do feel like it starts to kind of weigh and like sit on the leather. Um, the second I've added this in, it's just given it that like structure back, which I absolutely love. And I love the fact that it doesn't take away any of the space inside. Like you can still fit your laptop, you know, and you've even got those like extra little compartments just to put things, um, but it's not like taken away the space of the handbag or the practicality of the size of the bag which i absolutely love it just molds so perfectly to the inside of it you just have to kind of like fiddle around a bit and like mold it in and shape it in but oh my goodness me once it's in it is just perfect and the la pliage has got the ox blood in there and i feel like the difference this has made to this handbag i feel like you're only gonna see it if i actually like hold it up here because this bag was one that oh my goodness me it was so bad at like flopping before a second you had anything heavy in it like a water bottle or a laptop or anything it just flopped whereas now it is holding such amazing structure which i just absolutely love i can't get over how like structured it looks now but it's not added any weight to it, which is something that I was a little bit worried about, I'm not gonna lie to you, um, because I'm someone that doesn't like heavy handbags and I really, really struggle if they're like too weighty on my shoulder. Um, so I love the fact that it doesn't add any weight to it, it just adds that like structure and it just looks like it's got like a proper base now, which is what I'm so, so happy with. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, the one that I've actually noticed the biggest difference to is the Alexa. Oh my goodness me, even just sitting here before it would like flop down, like this section would kind of be like that as it was sitting there. But now look at that structure. Oh my word, this is exactly what I want my Alexa to always look like. And it just never did before until I put this in. Um, and I'm so glad that I got the brown because look at that. It just looks like it's a part of the bag that you wouldn't even know that it is something different, that it's like an insert or anything. You would just think that it was a part of the bag. And um, it just has added like a new lease of life. Like this bag looks new again. I feel like the leather looks new again. And it is just making me so excited that it is going to save my handbag because this is the one that I was most worried about ruining. Um, and look, when I lift it up before, there would be such a like bulge underneath. Um, if I had anything in there, like my wallet or my phone or anything like that there would always be a bulge underneath and now that bulge is completely gone it's just given it the most solid base i feel like that's the best way to describe it it just gives it such a like base and structure to the bag without taking away the like integrity of each handbag so i'm so in love with them i feel like they made such a difference and i think i'm gonna have to need to get one for every single handbag in my collection now um so i will leave a link down below all of the different bags um inserts that they offer because they do literally like every brand that you can think of every retailer you can think of they even do like demelier pauline like so many brands that i wouldn't have thought they would have thought of if that makes sense i would have thought they would have just gone for like the major high-end brands like ysl and louis vuitton and Saint Laurent, all of that jazz but no they do high-end brands mid-tier brands and it is just so so perfect for any of your handbags that you feel like just need a little bit more structure and a little but more like help with regards to keeping their shape so thank you so much handbag angels i feel like this has just changed the game for me well this is a spot that i've never placed you before i've literally just propped you up inside my wardrobe because i'm basically going through my entire handbag collection now and thinking about what other bags could really use an insert um i'm pretty sure they do the sac du jour insert um so that would be a really really good one this is one that's like it is quite um structured but i do feel like it would be nice to have a liner oh I've been looking for this camera battery for so long. 
Oh my goodness me, I'm a nightmare. Um, but this is one that I feel like could really utilize an insert mainly just for protection because I get so worried about scuffing this bag up because it's a really soft leather and obviously it's so pale. So that would be a really good one. I feel like my mini base water, which is in the other base water style. I don't know why they called these both base waters. Mulberry. This is, why is this the same name as that one? They're completely different. Um, but anyway, my mini base water will be a really, really good one to utilize because despite the fact that it's fairly structured, this is quite a soft leather. So I do feel like eventually it would definitely start to kind of like misshapen. Um, I feel like my Louis Vuitton Speedy would be a really, really good one to utilize it for. And I wonder if they do my basket bags. Like my Loewe basket bag, my Saint Laurent basket bag. I need to have a look online because I'm literally going through my entire bag collection now. Um, but I want to show you what this looks like without the insert, actually, just so that you can really get a good idea. Um, obviously, this is not sponsored by Handbag Angels. They just send them over. And I'm so excited about it because I do feel like when it comes to investment items, you really need to make sure you're looking after them. And this is something I speak about a lot, but there's no point in spending loads of money in something if you're not going to look after it. Um, so you can already see how soft this leather is the second I've taken it out like look at that if I kind of like do this up properly you can see how much it like scushes up and I do like that it's a soft leather I feel like it really works with this bag but the second you have anything in this it does that it like pinches and pulls which I absolutely hate because I just worry that this is going to ruin like even as I hold this look how much it bends and it misshapens and I'm just so worried about the leather getting completely ruined um so you literally just slot it in and just kind of like as I said mold it to the shape um so I really like the fact that the outsides are less sturdy than the bottom you've obviously got that shaper at the bottom the base but the outsides do kind of like mold to what the actual bag is like so you just kind of have to mold it around make sure that it fits flush and then the difference oh my goodness i need one of these for every single bag in my collection now because i can't believe like, look at that i can hold it now and it doesn't scush like oh my god I'm so happy right now because as I said this is my favourite handbag and I've just been getting so stressed out about ruining it and misshaping it and it just not lasting like my other handbags so I feel like this is the way to make sure that I am looking after it and I am making sure that it lasts in my collection, it lasts in my handbag wardrobe um, and I get as much use out of it as possible so absolutely in love with these well i am looking rather different to how i was looking earlier the fancy watch has been swapped out for the apple watch the low bun has been swapped into a low pony and the cute little outfit has been changed into sweats <laughs> i have a workout class at book tonight which i'm really really looking forward to and Thought I would just give you a quick little outfit for and um, because I am living in these leggings at the moment these are the sweaty betty 7 8 leggings and oh my goodness I'm wearing them if I'm just chilling at home I'm wearing them when I'm going to the gym they're great for like cycle classes they're great for um weight classes like they're just really durable leggings so comfortable so I've just chucked those on um with my little new look trainers which I'm loving these for the cycle class because they're very like bendy so I really really like them um for that so they're really really comfy to wear um and then I've just chucked on this little new look sweatshirt over the top and underneath it I've just got a little Nike sports top on. I love wearing an all black outfit to Cyclone. I feel like it's just like so chic and elegant. Alex actually calls it my Kim Possible gym gear um, but I always like to wear a sweatshirt over the top just to get me to and from the club because there's nothing worse than being freezing before or after your workout. Um, I've also just taken my makeup off because I don't enjoy working out in makeup. I just feel like my face feels really tight and I much prefer it when it can just kind of like breathe and I don't get self-conscious if I sweat if I have no makeup on which I know is really gross but that is just how my mind works um that is why I always make sure my gym bag which is behind me there um it's always like fully stocked with regards to like makeup especially if I'm going to the club early in the morning and I want to put on my makeup um I feel like all of the handbag organization we've been doing today has really put me in the mood to like organize everything so I've actually just done a bit of an organize of my um gym bag so a couple of essentials I always have in here my Monica Vinader jewelry box and um, this is such a perfect size I'll show you actually um if I can open it with one hand um but it's really handy to have if I'm either going to the gym early in the morning then it means that I can fill this with my jewellery of the day or if I'm going for a swim maybe like late afternoon it means I can take my jewellery off and I know it's going to be nice and safe in there um, so it's got room for loads which obviously is empty at the moment but it does mean that when I need to I've got the jewellery bits that I need um, and the makeup bag wise these are my kind of essentials at the moment that I always have with me this is just a little makeup bag I got from Cloud9 
don't really remember when I got this, but it's one of those see-through ones, so I always find it really, really handy. So just a few essentials that I always keep in here. I've got my Tangle Teaser brush, which I always love to have. This is a super handy one because it's like travel and it means you don't get hairs everywhere. I always like to hair oil my hair after the gym, especially if I'm not washing my hair at the gym. I just put a bit of hair oil in, slick it back in a pony or a bun, and we are good to go. I've got the Joe Loves paintbrush, which honestly I'm just obsessed with. You just click this down at the bottom and then you can put some on your decolletage, your neck, your wrists. Um, um, and then it just means you're smelling lovely after you are leaving. Also great if you are not showering at the gym. Uh, it's really gross, but you know. Um, and then very heavy pixie products, other than this NARS blush, which you guys know this blush. This is my um, stick blush from NARS, which I absolutely adore. It's a lot of like stick products and products that I can just use my hands with. Um, as you'll notice, I have no brushes in here. So I've got the pixie on the go bronze um, bronzer, which I love, the H2O skin tint, and then a little brow gel just to brush up my brows. Um, and then it just means that I've got everything that I need to if I want to do a quick makeup top up after I've had a workout it just means that I have everything that I need so I'm gonna get myself going ready for this cycle class I'm not gonna lie I'm really looking forward to this class tonight there's nothing better than an evening cycle I feel like you're either a morning gym person or an evening gym person and I'm a bit of both I really like doing a cycle class in the evening because I just feel like I can sweat out the day dance along to music with things like swimming weights I much prefer doing that in the morning I don't know why let me know if anyone else is similar but I'm gonna get going and I'll catch you guys in the morning well good morning everyone my goodness me as you can see it is a dark wet miserable day the rain is hammering down outside this is the best room to be in terms of filming when the rain is hammering it's the one room you can't hear it in i woke up this morning headed downstairs i had my morning cup of tea in the kitchen and honestly the noise on the velux windows was just absolutely insane but i'm really embracing it i feel like after yesterday's cycle class I need a relaxing day today. I need a chilled out day because yesterday was tough. It was FTP week, which basically means that you kind of like set your new goal and you have to do like five minutes pushing it 100%. You feel like your legs are gonna give way underneath. You're out of breath, like you are so exhausted and you still have to like push it through. It was such a tough session, but I felt so, so good for it afterwards. And it actually started raining last night. And when I came out of the cycle class, you know when you've like been inside the gym and you don't know what the weather's like outside. And I came outside of the cycle class, I was like literally tomato red in my face. And the rain just hit me. And you know when you just feel that like sense of calm and you're just like, oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm actually enjoying this. Um, so I'm really embracing the rain today um, and keeping it cozy and comfy. I've made myself a morning coffee. I've got my little Ralphie jumper on. Um, and I tried something different with my hair last night, which I feel like it's safe to say has definitely not worked. As you can see, we're going pretty much makeup free today. Um, I don't know if I've got the right setting on my ring lights beside me here. Um, and we've got a few different settings to choose from. I feel like that's very cool. Well, no, that's off. Hang on. No, that's too cool. It's a little bit better. No, I do think this is the right setting. I can turn it a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Honestly, it's the hardest thing to try and get the lighting right on days like today. And it just reminds me how difficult vlogging is in winter. Um, but yeah, I tried something different with my hair last night. And I feel like it's safe to say it has not worked. And I'm really going to need to research this, look into this and try and master it because I do feel like it could be quite a good hairstyle for me. And I'm not gonna lie, this is something I've been meaning to do for such a long time. Um, and I've just not really got round to it. You know those things be like, yeah, I really need to try that, I really need to try that. You guys will probably remember that I unboxed this. It must have been back at the beginning of summer. I've had this literally sitting in my drawer for months. It's from the brand Eternal Muse. And they are basically like the brand when it comes to heatless curls. Now you guys will know I don't really curl my hair anymore. Don't really, don't curl my hair anymore. I don't use heat at least to curl it. I found that it was just damaging my hair far too much. My hair is naturally pretty straight. Um, it's naturally quite like, it likes the bob. I feel like it keeps the bob really, really well, especially when it's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit long at the moment to be kind of like keeping its shape as well. Um, but I feel like ever since stopping curling my hair with straighteners or with curlers or like with heat, my hair health has been so much better. However, I do quite like being able to experiment with different hairstyles and I do quite like a little bit of movement in my hair. So I really wanted to give heatless curls a go. Now these ones are a bit different because they're not the traditional 
overhead ones now i can't use those because i sleep on my side and i've tried them so many times and they would just completely fall out i feel like also because my care is quite soft it was quite difficult to get them to stay in um, and i would wake up the next morning and literally i'd have like a prong up here and it just was not comfortable was not cute i couldn't sleep well and i discovered these ones which are slightly different now, i'm not entirely sure why there's two i'm not sure if you're supposed to actually put them in space buns if it's just like a spare one but basically this is a heatless curler that you essentially put your hair up into a ponytail and then curl down and then this is the teeniest tiniest little bonnet to put over the top of it so i'm not gonna lie alex was cracking up laughing when he came to bed last night because he just saw i literally did it right at the top of my head so obviously i can sleep comfortably on my side and it was literally just sitting like that and he just came in and went nice bonnet it's like thanks babe so it's definitely not the kind of thing that you wear to be um sexy or anything like that but when you've been together as long as we have anything goes um so basically what you do is i put my hair up in like a pineapple ponytail um, and then take this you go to the top of your hair and then basically wind it down and then twirl round and clip it back together and then you put the bonnet over the top to protect it um and i definitely think it was comfortable to sleep in and the curls that i first woke up with this morning were actually quite voluminous and curly i've left it for about an hour to kind of like settle and relax and they definitely are not curls anymore like they've kind of just gone to waves and i don't know if it's a mixture of the way i used it or the fact that my hair was still a little bit damp when i put it in last night i feel like maybe my hair needs to be completely dry but obviously when i got back from my cycle class i had a shower washed my hair let it dry naturally and then just put it in when i went to bed so i feel like maybe i need to give myself a little bit more time for it to dry naturally um but i do feel like this could be quite a good method um especially if i just want like some a little bit of movement in my hair i do feel like especially with curls it's so much better when you do like the half up half down look and i love a half up half down do it really is like my go-to hairstyle at the moment so i feel like with a little little bit more practice this could be quite a good hairstyle to try um they have different colors as well i'll leave a tunnel music link down below they have loads of different um options but if anyone is a heatless curl expert or you know anyone that's a heatless curl expert any videos you can send me any advice that you can give i would very much recommend it because as you can see it really has not quite worked how i wanted it to but luckily it's just going to be a day at home today i'm not impressing anyone so it doesn't really matter how it looks <laughs> okay so i've just come in here because i feel like the lighting is ever so slightly better in here honestly the entire house is just like so dark not in a bad way though it's like moody dark it's cozy dark i've lit all the candles around the house and it is just smelling absolutely incredible i've just really taken the opportunity to just do a little bit of pottering tidying up around the house um and just really getting the cozy vibes but the reason i've came in here is because i have a rather exciting unboxing for you guys from a brand that i discovered when we first got engaged was when i first discovered the brand and ever since i've fallen head over heels for them now, i don't know if you're going to recognize the little sticker there but the brand is bramley and they're a brand that they stock on john lewis or you can just shop directly from bramley and oh my goodness me the products are just beautiful i actually use two products from them every single night let me get them because they're literally in my bedside drawer <laughs> over here and i cannot be without them the pillow spray and the body lotion now obviously the pillow spray i spray on our pillows every single night and for me it's really important to spray a pillow spray i feel like it's a bit pavlovian but i do feel like pillow sprays really really help me with my sleep i feel like the second that my brain kind of like gets that scent it knows it's time for bed it's time for sleep it's time to unwind so i absolutely love this one this is the one with lavender yarrow and chamomile essential oils and it's just so so beautiful um and then the other one that i use is the body lotion now i don't know if this is tmi but i cream my feet every single day when i get into bed i cream my hands and i cream my feet and i <laughs> alex sneezing downstairs sorry um but i cream my hands and i cream my feet and i just cannot be without having like nicely moisturized hands and feet i can't sleep without it i know that sounds so dramatic but honestly i can't and this has been my favorite one because it's not too greasy it doesn't take ages to set in it's just like a really really nice one and the smell is <laughs> once he starts he can't stop guarantee you're gonna hear at least three more sneezes um but this is the one with juniper sweet orange and bergamot essential oils and it is just such a beautiful one i absolutely oh just adore the scent it's like a nice fresh one which is really really lovely so those are two products that i have literally been using every single day from ramley for months so i'm really excited to unbox some new 
goodies from them because I feel like I just want to have a bit of a pamper this afternoon. I feel like I want to get back into my PJs and maybe have like an afternoon bath and just unwind because today is the day for unwinding. Right, I'm going to have to get all of these products out because my goodness me, there is a lot of packaging here. Do you know what, as I'm boxing them, I'm literally thinking to myself how perfect these would be for Christmas gifting. I know it's still a little bit early to be talking about Christmas, but I really am starting to think about my gifts, my planning, what I'm gonna be buying people, and this I feel like would be such a gorgeous gift to receive. So this is actually the Restore Hand gift set, and I need to find out which flavor I picked up. I can't remember which one I went for, but I love the fact that you've got the little sleeve to take out. The packaging is just so like simple and beautiful. I really, really love it. Love how elegant it feels um the lavender geranium and petty grain petty grain potentially i need to give this a smell because i'm so so excited for this and i love having like a matching hand and hand soap and hand cream beside each other at the sink oh my god that smells so festive i remember why i chose this one now Oh my goodness me, that is getting me seriously in the Christmas mood. I feel like as soon as our current hand and, um, I keep saying hand and body cream, our hand wash and body cream run out, this is going straight in the bathroom because first of all, the packaging is just so, so beautiful. I absolutely adore that. It's just like really simple, really lovely, but the smell of this. I wasn't expecting it to be so festive from the sound of it, like lavender, geranium and petty grain. Maybe it's the petty grain. I need to find out exactly what petty grain is. I wonder if it's gonna tell me. So it says here, our centuries old botany, our expert plant smiths have combined our unique apple ingredient with essential oils and natural botanics to create products that smell wonderful, enhance your well-being, and reconnect you to the tranquil English countryside. Cruelty free, skin kind, and vegan. You won't find anything in our products that mother nature wouldn't approve of, making us perfect for everyone. I love that. So really, really excited to add those into the bathroom. Um, I then picked up a candle, which is in the Rose Absolute Spare Mint and Peppermint. I and mean, this is going to smell so fresh. I just know it. Oh my God. Look at that packaging as well. <laughs> That's like the biggest inhalation I think I have ever done, but Oh, that's like the perfect relaxing and unwinding candle that literally smells like your inner spa. I think I'm going to have to light that and run myself a bath because that is just, that's just beautiful. So fresh. And yet you have that like warmth of the rose. I just love how simple the packaging is. So no matter who you're going to be like gifting to or whether you're getting it for yourself, it's going to go with anyone's interior. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness me. And then lastly, I picked up a new reed diffuser. Now, you know how much I adore my reed diffusers. I literally have them all throughout the house, like absolutely everywhere, because I just feel like they really, really help with regards to making your house feel cozy, making your house feel homely. And I absolutely love it when someone walks into my house and goes, oh my God, it smells amazing in here. I'm like, thanks. So I always really regularly rotate the reeds. I really regularly update my reed diffusers and like change up the season. And this is the lemongrass, spearmint and clementine. And I have a feeling this is going to smell rather festive. I won't be able to smell it now until I like properly open it. Um, but I feel like this is going to be perfect for the month of November. This is like a a little bit festive starting to feel those christmas vibes but we're not fully in december like we're not fully going for the like winter spice vibes i feel like it's the clementine that i was absolutely adore at this time of year it's another gorgeous one to unbox i cannot wait to open this and put this around the house um so the most beautiful products from brown i absolutely adore the brand i'll leave it linked down below and this candle I can literally smell from over here i'm just absolutely obsessed with it. so i think what i might do is light this beauty run myself a bath and just have a really lovely, relaxing evening.